Hello my art loving friends! I have a very exciting video for you today because in today's video we get to play with oil pastels. Now I know these aren't watercolors but oil pastels can be really fun and I'm going to show you how in this video. Because of past experiences with companies offering to send me free product, I have decided to become very, very picky about what I say yes to. But if Paul Rubens contacts me and asks me to try a product, you can bet I'm going to say yes because I have loved every product they've ever put out that I've tried. And I am so excited to jump into these, so let's just do it already. Actually, before we do that, real quick, I'll link it in the corner for you because in the last video, up there, or in the description box below, I told you guys I would show you that page that I painted in this book here because I forgot it on the trip that I was with. Anyway, I couldn't show it to you, but here it is. The page I painted while on that trip, ta-da! I mean, I painted all the designs. I didn't paint the background like I said I was going to initially, but really like it. <laughs> and yeah, the paint soaked right in, but once it dried, you can't really see anything except those ones that were the red tulips that I made really deep in color, and then this flower right here kind of shows through. Anyway, there it is. So the color's not as vibrant as it would be on a watercolor paper, but I still like it. And then I had a good suggestion from Jen on this to try gouache. So we will be doing that in the future. I will be adding that to the list of many, many things to do on this channel that are super fun. But anyway, let's get into the oil pastels. I'm really excited to try them out because I actually like oil pastels. Here they are. We open them up. They gave us a swatch sheet. My only complaint with that would be is they don't match the columns of the oil pastels. It would be nice if there were three rows of swatches and they were all in a line like where they were. That'd be kind of cool, but it's nice that they give you the sheet anyway. You have this brochure. Oh, and something on the cover I wanted to show you is let more people like Chinese colors. And I think that's pretty cool because often when we see here in the US something that says made in China, we tend to think of it as a more cheaply made item, but I like that they're proud of that. That's really neat. Brochure. Wow, look at all those colors. This isn't all the colors, but this is their different sets. Here's their set of 12, for example. Here's their set of 24, set of 36, 48, 60, and 72. And the one I have, as you probably saw on the cover, is the set of 48. So it comes with the nice foam over the top of them, and as you saw, three columns. And if you touch one, it comes off. <laughs> it is an oil pastel after all. However, they shouldn't be dusty like chalk pastels. Like I said, I usually like oil pastels. The last time I used oil pastels, at least that I can remember, other than gelatos, because they are very similar to oil pastels, really. Is in this sketchbook here, I did this. This eagle. And that was back in 2020 and they were the Niji oil pastels, and then I sprayed them with some kind of fixative. I don't know, I'd have to watch that video again to tell you which one. Probably the same one that I'll be using in today's piece. So anyway, I love it, and I could probably use the same sketchbook for today's fun. We will see. Might as well. But first, let's swatch these and make sure we know what all the colors look like. I pulled the white out, and you can see here it has the name Paul Rubens Oil Pastel on it, and that's probably that in Chinese. Feels softer, experience, nicer. <laughs> That's funny. And then it also has some other information in Chinese, but over here it has a color number 001 and the color name white and that's pretty cool. Light fast information, transparency, and the pigment. And if I can see that correctly, that is a PW6. So let's see what the white looks like. Let's zoom you in. I want to see how opaque this is, so I'm going to leave you in real time with me. Nice! Oh, and it's soft and creamy and delightful. I love it. It's fairly opaque. I have a Sharpie line under that. It is quite nice. And just for your information, I rub my finger over that to kind of blend it together. And it does come off on your finger, obviously. <laughs> and quite a bit. So let's smear this around and see what happens. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, it's so creamy. It's like you're stirring butter around on your fingers. It's just not yellow. It's all these different colors. 
And I'm going to speed you through most of these swatches because the color that you see on the label and sticking out of each side definitely matches what goes down on the paper. And I'll show you how they lay down more in real time when we're doing the actual paintings with these awesome pastels. But here is one real time because I blend this one with my finger. It just seemed extra creamy and I wanted to see what that was like blending it with the finger. You can see definitely comes off really dark. And here are the rest of the swatches. You can see the selection of colors is quite nice. I do wish there were more pure pastel type of colors, but there's ways to get around that and I'll show you that later. All done. Now, when I swatch these, you see how the backs of them are open. They don't have paper on the back. And so when I tend to hold them, the back of this crayon, if you want to call it that, or pastel, hits my fingers right here. And it comes right off all over my skin. It's not a big deal. It's way less than chalk pastels, but I just want you to be aware that it will hit your hands no matter how you're using it. And they are so soft and creamy, they definitely remind me more of an oil stick than an oil pastel, which is probably a good thing. It's probably an advantage to many people. They're so creamy, you're going to be able to just use them probably like an oil paint or an oil stick paint. Oil paint stick? Yes, oil paint stick. <laughs> so I am kind of curious if I got a brush out with, I don't know, some paint thinner on it, odorless mineral spirits, if this would kind of smear together. I'm sure it would. Let's try it out. All right, in here I have odorless mineral spirits. I have a brush by Rosemary & Co. These are the Paint Coaches brushes. Get some mineral spirits on the brush. And these smear without mineral spirits. I'm just, I'm just curious. <laughs> oh my goodness, so creamy. You can see obviously in the camera here how creamy that is. That just smoothed right out. So this is like more like oil paint in a stick. And I know some oil pastels are like that, but the ones I've always used in the past are more cheap, I would say. <laughs> and they're not quite like this. These are just extra creamy and deluxe. Now, I don't have a whole lot of experience with oil pastels. I've used them a handful of times. You know, probably I could count on both my hands how many times I have used oil pastels. So definitely not an expert. Just the few that I have used and the few times I have used them, this is super enjoyable. I just wasn't planning on using them like an oil paint. I was kind of thinking they would be a little firmer and more like a harder version of an oil pastel. The fact that these are so creamy definitely makes me want to carefully consider what kind of painting I do with them because of their extreme creaminess. I decided to start out with something a little more cartoonish, illustrative, however you want to say it, and just get some familiarity with the product. So you can see I'm just putting a gradient sky in there. They're so creamy. You're going to keep hearing that, I'm sure. I'll try and come up with better descriptions than that. But you can see how easily they're going down on the paper. This is just regular 90 pounds sketchbook paper, drawing paper. And then I do take my finger and see if I can just blend and it works beautifully so I don't end up taking the brush with mineral spirits at all on this because I just end up using my finger the whole time. I do end up grabbing a nitrile glove after this and using that instead to spread the oil pastels but I give up on that in the later painting. I just need my own finger in there on the paint. I'm gonna call it paint because that's basically what it feels like. It's pretty neat. Look at the blend. It's so beautiful. And now I'm putting in some clouds so you can see how nice and opaque that goes down. Obviously, if you lighten the touch or blend it out with your fingers or whatever, it can become more transparent. But if you keep that first heavy touch of the pastel on your layer, then it will stay very opaque. And you can go back over it a couple of times before it gets a little bit saturated. And I did find after a couple of days that this dries up a bit. And so if you need even more layers, just give it a couple of days to dry, just like regular oil paints. And then you can layer over a little bit more easily. Now with this piece, I didn't try to do anything too detailed because the pastels are very thick. And I did end up peeling some paper off the back sides of them in the next painting that you'll see in this video and use that as more of a straight edge. You can carve these, sharpen them if you want, but they're a little 
creamy. You're going to have to find probably an X-Acto knife to sharpen them. I don't think any kind of regular sharpener would work. And because I didn't take that step with these, the doors and windows aren't perfect in my cute little beach houses, but this was just a doodle drawing and I'm very happy with it. It makes me happy when I look at it. You can see the beautiful blending happening again here when I blend all the sand together. And I think it looks great. It looks just like beach sand. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it does anyway with some waves and shadows in it. And yes, sand can have waves in it because I said so. <laughs> Here's a little real time house painting for you. So you can see I'm definitely not getting too detail oriented. My edges aren't perfect, but that is okay. And I'm going to keep the rest of this particular one sped up, but I'll get into little batches of real time here and there with the next one, the lion painting, because that one is super fun and it turns out very well. So I already mentioned how the labels and the colors that the pastels are showing outside of the paper very much match the way they go down on the paper. <laughs> so there's no need to make another swatch sheet that matches these rows or columns because they are what you see. It makes it really easy to pick your next color for your painting and I am appreciative of that. So we're just finishing up the last two little beach houses here. I do add a couple of green tufts in sand because sometimes green things do grow in sand. I see it in the desert all the time. And I've seen it at beaches and it's kind of fun to have a little green stuff in the front of this little illustrative drawing. So you'll see that, I'll grab green. It was hard to choose which green I wanted, but that one worked out pretty well. It's showing a little brighter on the screen than it actually is in real life, but I like it. All done, tape peel time. I took the outside tape off while the camera battery died, so that was fun. Probably should spray this before taking the tape off because it's messy. Look where I'm holding the paper. Over there, it's getting all messed up, but that leaves me a nice place to label it. Uh, I'm gonna sign this with dark blue down here, and then I'll spray it. <laughs> Very messy signature, but kind of fun. I can't help myself. I'm gonna label it now, even though it's hard to touch. <laughs> it means my hand, oh look, see, like I said, I should have sprayed it first. Dang it, that's hard to do without putting your hand on the paper. All right, other than the boo-boo right there, pretty good. Now, because these seem so much like real oil paints, sorry, that was probably loud, I wanna try and paint with them on a real canvas. So this is the Michaels brand Artist Loft, but this is their most expensive canvas, I believe, professional level three, gallery wrapped heavy duty canvas. So it's very high quality. They had to sell buy one, get two free. So there's a little spot on there that's not perfect, but on the back they have the adjustment areas in there. You can see those are for adjusting, but it didn't come with any of the adjuster bars. I think I have some though. That is to tighten the canvas like that. It's kind of loose right now. So I may not start this until tomorrow. I think I'll do the wet this on the front and then on the back and let it dry overnight and see if it tightens up at all. And it did tighten up quite a bit. Not as much as I really want, but I was pretty darn happy with it. It was much easier to work on being a little bit tighter like that. You can see I'm putting the white on and I have a canvas that's wrapped around the edges like I told you in the beginning there. It was gallery wrapped, that's what they call it. So I wanna make sure that my paint, if you wanna call it that, wraps around the edges as well because I want the full painting to be looking like it goes clear around the edges. That way it doesn't have some strange white border around the whole thing. I know a lot of people will just paint their edges a solid color, but I just wanted my painting to continue off the sides. And you can see quite a bit of the canvas is showing through, so I'm either gonna have to blend or add more pigment to the canvas surface, but you'll see how I deal with that. And here you can see I'm peeling off, and they have little perforations on the paper, which you can't even see in person, but as you peel each one off, they come off in, I'd say, three-eighths of an inch sections. It's pretty neat. One thing I realized I did not try in this video, though, was taking a brush, dipping it in some mineral spirits, and then rubbing it on the pastel because I could probably have gotten a more fine edge that way. I just realized I didn't get to try that. So maybe when I'm finishing up the final details in this a little bit later, I can give that a try. Although I don't really have an area for doing that, but still I'm curious and I wanna know how I might be able to get a little bit smaller details because you can tell these are chunky sticks, right? And even if you sharpen them with an X-Acto knife or anything like that, it's 
going to be really soft still. So even with sharpening and sacrificing some of the stick, I think you're still gonna have trouble getting a really fine line. So yeah, I'm thinking the brush thing probably will work. I'll try it out and I'll let you guys know either in the community tab or in the next video. My plan for this video was to have more of it in real time, but I didn't realize the length of the pastel sticks are such a way that when I hold them in my hand, my hand is pretty much covering what I am doing on the video. So there are a few sections where I actually use the pastel in such a way that my hand's not right over the top of that. And I have tried to put some of those in real time for you. But unfortunately, the majority of the time, my hand is right over the dang top of what I'm doing, so you can't even see it. It's such a bummer. So now I realize when I'm filming something where I'm holding it basically under my hand, I'll have to use a different filming angle. So that will be something I keep in mind big time in the future. So everything that I can film here that is somewhat interesting in real time, I have done. The rest has been sped up to mostly 2000%. So imagine all of this 2000% less speed and that's how much time it took me. So it was quite a lengthy project yet at the same time when you think about people who spend weeks and months on an oil painting this was nothing. This is probably two hours. I'll have to look at the footage here in a moment and, and let you know. Okay so I looked at the footage and yeah it's right at about two hours so perfect. In reality though, I do have a few things left on it that I wanna finish up, like I forgot whiskers towards the end, and there's a little bit of the canvas that I wanna fill in more, and then I realize later there's some more purple I want to add. So I probably have half hour to an hour more at the most. I wouldn't think it would take an hour, but probably a good half an hour to 45 minutes of finishing things up. Fair warning, if you are gonna go search for these, like at Amazon and you type in Paul Rubens oil pastels, this particular model or version of the oil pastels does not come up very easily. Now these are the Haya, I don't know how to say that, H-A-Y-I-A oil pastels by Paul Rubens, and they don't come up in the search. So use the links down in my description box if you want to make sure you have the exact product I have. If you do Paul Rubens oil pastels, you'll see that they're the perfectly round ones on both sides. They don't have the soft, like, graduated tips like the ones I'm using here. And if you click the link below, it does take you to the right ones. So I'm sure you can find these without using my links. And yeah, their affiliate links, of course I would, um, I actually don't get a throwback from these because these are the links from Paul Rubens themselves. So I assume that they probably get the commission for these. So use the links, you know, let them know that my video was useful if you're trying to get these or if you find them on a search, let us know how you did find them because I put in a couple of different search terms and just kept getting the regular kind of skinny sticks, not these fat, creamy, delicious sticks. And of course that does beg the question, how do these compare to the regular oil pastels that I'm finding every time I search Paul Rubens oil pastels? And I don't know, since I don't have the other version, I only have this version so I think maybe Lindsay has the other version. Maybe she can chime in if she happens to watch this video and, and see how they compare to each other. I think she may have done a video on these. If so, I either watched it while I was busy doing something else and don't remember it, or I waited to watch it because I knew I was gonna review them and didn't wanna be influenced by her opinion. So I'm going to go look right after I finish editing this video and see if she did publish a video on this. If so, I will link it in the description box below because she always has some very detailed information on products that she reviews. One thing in the question and answer section on the link for Amazon is, what is the difference with the Haya oil pastels versus the normal? And the answer from Paul Rubens was that there's the second generation oil pastels with a new body shape design, more soft and creamy, smoother to use, and with less oil. So I guess that's something. A couple of the reviews also said that they showed up kind of melted, so I would keep these away from high temperatures. I have one kind of melt on me towards the end because you can see the sun is shining in the side window there occasionally. Make sure when you're working on these that you don't have them in a sunny spot. That would be a warning to heed for sure. A few of the reviews also say that these are absolute Sennelier dupes, and I only have, I think, maybe three Sennelier oil pastels 
in my drawer from previous subscription boxes that I have not yet gotten to. It's on the list. Lots of things are on the list though. And we got some fun watercolor stuff coming up. So definitely look out for that in the future. Subscribe if you're not already. It is free to you and you can hit the notification bell and it will just let you know when I have a new video coming out and you can choose to watch it or not, although I do certainly hope that you would choose to watch it. <laughs> and thank you to all of you who are always here week after week, time after time. I really appreciate all of you. Now here's a little bit of real time action so you can kind of see how quickly or not quickly I'm putting the pastel onto the canvas and then I will just stir it up with my fingers, mix it up, blend it in. And I probably should have kept my gloves on for all of this, but guys, I just couldn't handle wearing them. So I'm just careful not to touch my face before I go wash really thoroughly. I know that the oils can soak in through my skin too, but I'm just gonna have to take that chance this time. I need gloves that fit me better. Those were too big for me and it didn't work. So if I do this again, I think I'll go ahead and just order some of the nitrile gloves that are actually my size. And then I would feel much more comfortable using them in a project like this because they wouldn't be so sloppy all over the place. Okay, I am completely 100% out of time for today and I have to edit the video today in order to get it to you guys in time. So there's a couple of things that I need to go through on this. It's basically done. You know, the map is filled in, but I don't like some of the white of the canvas showing through. So on my own time, I'll just kind of fill things in here and there like this and make it completely complete. <laughs> And then I'll just put a picture of it finished on my community tab at some point later this week. Um, probably not going to look a whole lot different because you're not going to really see much of these changes very clearly on the camera screen there. But I do want to make sure that it feels completely finished to me. And that is important, I think. So I will do that. So yeah, just keep an eye out on my community tab sometime after this video and you'll be able to see the finished product. Oh, one thing, let me go grab the first drawing. Here we go. I did not spray it yet because as you know, with oil paints, you're supposed to let them dry, obviously, before you do any kind of varnish. And you can use the Gamvar or something uh, before the six month time. You can use it as soon as things feel dry to the touch. But what I was wondering is, do these oil pastels dry like oil paints and I'm assuming they probably do. So I did not spray this yet. I'm just putting it in a safe place in the closet for, I don't know, I'll probably leave it in there a couple of weeks just to be safe and then I will spray it. It's just my sketchbook, so it's not a huge deal. And then on this one, I might try that satin gamvar finish because I have that in my cupboard and it would be fun to use it. I've never used it before, but I need to double check that that's the one I can use when things are dry to the touch and I'm assuming these will dry to the touch. I hope they do anyway. This was really fun. These are extremely creamy and enjoyable to use. I'm definitely keeping them around in my studio. Look at the shine on this one. It's just like the oil coming out. <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely not a clean medium to use. It's not nearly messy like chalk pastels. Ooh, that one is super soft. It was kind of in the sun for a while. I didn't even think about that, but the whole tip tried to just come off right then because it's just slip sliding around. So that tells you how soft these are. I think they'll be a fun addition to use like with oil painting and maybe when I'm doing my super big canvases. I think all of these are showing three star light fast. I should probably check some of the reds. Three star, that's a PR 122. So they have pigment information and the light fast information. So this one is a two star. Let's look at this pink. It should be pretty light fast because it has a lot of white in it, I assume. Three star. Yeah, so it should be okay to use these on your big works. I think that's a two or three star. I think it's a two star. Regardless, three star, and that's a very pink one. I think that'll be really fun to add in with some my oil painting practice. I do want to do some more research on these though and make sure of compatibility with other products. So I will be doing that after the fact and when I use these again, I'll let you know what I come up with. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this was as fun for you as it was for me because I had way too much fun. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.
and yes, I'm gonna go wash my hands thoroughly, but I have to pick all this up first because they're just gonna get messy again until I do that. Because of past experiences with, try that again. Because of past experiences with companies offering the semi-free product, product, <laughs> do over. Because of past experience with companies, oh. because of past experience with, experience or experience? Ugh. But when Paul Rubens calls me up and asks me, hang on, <laughs> not calls me, but you know what I mean. And unlike Chuck, oh. I pulled the white, wow. We just hit everything. <laughs> oh, I have a sock. Cute. <laughs> <laughs>